Caln is a market town of about 18,000 people. It lies on the A4 Bristol to London Road and the River Marden flows through its centre. The town centre has changed a lot in the last 50 years or so. The route of the A4 has been modified on two occasions to enable traffic to pass through the town more easily. New Road to the south of the town centre was built in 1801 to create an alternative to Church Street, which was considered too narrow. In the 1960s, the section through the town centre was built, replacing Curzon Street and High Street and gutting the town centre which now has a major signalised traffic junction where the Strand used to be. For much of the 20th century, the town centre was dominated by the Harris's Bacon Factory. This was demolished in 1984-6, and this made way for an extensive regeneration project completed between 1991 and 2001. I will do a walk around the town centre, looking at some of the more interesting buildings and open spaces. Based on the town's Blue Plaque Trail, the Wiltshire edition of Pevsner's The Buildings of England and the Victoria County History. I will start at the south end of the town centre in New Road, which was cut through the gardens of houses in Church Street in 1801. We pass the pump said to be placed there at the instigation of Bo Nash to provide water to lay the dust on the road and water horses. It is by a bridge where there was another route out of the town. We then come to an area known as the Wharf. This marks the end of a branch of the Wilson Barks Canal into the town and was constructed by canalising a section of the River Marden. It can be seen that it comes right into the centre of the town, stopping at what was the site of the town mill. It was constructed in 1802 and carried traffic until 1906. At the same time, a house was built for the Wharfinger, who was in charge of traffic coming into the wharf. This is Marden House, a substantial building located by the pump. Unusually for Calm, built with a sandstone frontage. On the west side of the wharf is a social housing scheme designed by North Wiltshire District Council's Architects Department in the 1990s, which evokes the spirit of the old canal buildings. At the end of the canal, where the mill used to stand, is the Town Hall, built in 1884-6 by Brian Oliver of Bath. It is in Franco-Flemish late Gothic style. Pevsner commented that not much can be said in its favour. We are now at the Strand. Originally the Marden passed across this space. There was a large pool serving the town mill and the land beside it was known as the Strand. It was culverted over between 1840 and 1843, becoming the marketplace and then the town square, and it was the heart of the town until the 1960s, as this picture shows. It formed an enclosed square with several good buildings around it. Many of these still stand, but any notion of a public space has disappeared with the construction of the new road which now slices through it. Not all has been lost, however. As I have already mentioned, the demolition of the bacon factory and the building of the road paved the way for a redevelopment scheme sponsored by North Wiltshire District Council, Wiltshire County Council and English Heritage and considered by English Heritage to be a model for the regeneration of small towns. At its centre is a mixed-use development containing shops, flats and a public library with a large rotunda-shaped front facing the Strand. It was designed by Aaron Evans Associates of Bath and completed in 2001. 
Clad in Bath stone, it successfully performs the role of a landmark building needed in this location. On the terrace outside is The Head, a modernist sculpture by Rick Kirby, while around it is a delightful pocket park along the River Marden, which provides an attractive amenity area right in the centre of the town. A number of other new flats and houses in Church Street and New Street complement the character of the town. The other notable buildings surrounding the Strand are the Lansdowne Arms, once the Catherine Wheel, a coaching inn with a Lake Georgian front, and on the corner south of the library, the old bank house, built in 1901 in stone. It was originally the Capital and Counties Bank and later became offices for Harris's. Now we will head down Patford Street, which runs down the west side of the Town Hall and leads to Castlefields Park. It is a pretty street with some properties probably dating back to the 17th century. It leads under a section of the Wharf Flats to the park. In the park we see more evidence of the canal, including the remains of the lock where it joined the River Marden, and the Chavywell Bridge named after the nearby Chavywell, which was reputed always to deliver pure water. On the hill up above is the location of the castle, about which little is known. On the reputed site of the castle is Castle House, once an interesting building dating back to the 17th century, with a back range by Robert Adam. It was bought by the town council in 1961. The older part of the house was gutted by fire and demolished to be replaced by a wholly incongruous block of flats. Heading back down Castle Street towards the town hall, a left turn takes us round the back of the Lansdowne Arms along a pretty continuation of Castle Street, once known as Hog Street, to Market Hill on the site of the former marketplace. This contains some of the oldest buildings in Carl. The Pink House is the former Bell Inn, dating to 1705. Bevere's Solicitors has a slate sundial built into a rear wall dated 1683. Buckeridge's was probably the result of successive improvements on a market stall and is over 300 years old. This was the second of the public spaces that were important to the life of the town in the past, but once again it has been sliced through by the new road. Crossing the new road we reach High Street, once the course of the Bristol to London Road, now a pedestrianised shopping street. The coaching inn on the west side, now Salon 18, still bears the timetable for coaches leaving for all parts of the country, on wooden boards on each side of the archway which once led to the stables. At the top of the street is Phelps Parade, a covered shopping arcade from the early 1970s. At the entrance is a bronze statue of two pigs celebrating the town's bacon industry. The arcade leads through to the Zion Baptist Chapel of 1836. Retracing our steps we come back down to the Strand to begin what is the most attractive part of the walk. Turning left up Church Street we have the library on our left and a terrace of shops with flats over, also by Aaron Evans Associates on our right. They are stone faced with an elevation broken up and referencing the old bank house on the corner. We are now standing right in the centre of where the bacon factory used to be. Pigs from Ireland being driven to London passed through Calm and those who looked as though they wouldn't make it to London were sold off cheaply to the Harrises. We are now approaching the church, but a brief diversion up Mill Street takes us to the mill which gives the street its name, built across the River Marden just before it is joined by the Abbot Brook. 
Retracing our steps, we come to Proclamation Steps, which takes us up into the churchyard. By tradition, royal proclamations and other important announcements were made from these steps. St Mary's Church is one of the finest in Wiltshire. Outside, it is largely perpendicular, the great age of Carne's prosperity. The present tower is off to one side, as it replaced a tower over the central crossing, which collapsed in 1638. It is a fine tower, described by Pevsner as in the Somerset style. The church was closed when I visited, but the nave is mainly 12th century until it reaches the final bay of the nave, where Tuscan-style columns, dating from the church's rebuilding, take over. Facing the church, on a bend in Kingsbury Street, are Dr Townsend's almshouses, founded in 1682. The interiors were remodelled in 1973. Kingsbury Street rises up a short hill to the Green, a spacious triangle containing the wealthiest houses of Georgia and Calm. On the east side is the Weaver's House, a three-storey building dating from the late 18th century. It originally housed a clothing business, but later was used to store sawdust for Harris's. Another former mill is to be found further up, also dating from the late 18th century. It is of four storeys of coarse limestone rubble, set back from the road. On the southeast corner, also set back, is Adam House, with an 18th century three-bay front, with a central Venetian window and sporting four pineapples. On the south side, number 19, Priestley's House, is 16th century, with a refronting dated 1758, according to a date stone. The front is in limestone ashlar. It was originally a continuous range with number 20 and the White Heart, with a semi-basement extending below all three. Between about 1772 to 1779, it was the home of Joseph Priestley, who in 1774 discovered oxygen while working as a librarian for the Earl of Shelburne at Bowood House. On the corner facing London Road is the White Hart, a late 16th century inn, much altered in the 18th and 19th centuries. Its raised porch with two pairs of Doric columns is an impressive feature. The front is set back from the modern road to a line with Church Street, the former main road, which emerges here. The inn is in a poor state of repair at present. Before returning down Church Street, we need to look at the west side of the green. Facing the White Hart is the former boys' school of 1829, which Pevsner describes as having a pretty Gothic stone front. Further down is the girls' school of circa 1828, in a similar style, with a statuette of a girl in the gable. Both buildings are now houses. We complete our itinerary by returning to the centre of the town down Church Street. Number 41 was a priest's house or vicarage, dating to the early 17th century. It is regarded as the best surviving 17th century townhouse in Carl and a notable example of its type. By contrast, an extravagant pair of houses further down, with five rounded gables, extravagant downpipes, Jacobean windows and a pair of hood mouldings are clearly not what they seem, as they are unlisted. An arch beside is the entrance to Ivy Lane, which leads through to New Road. Passing the church on our right, we come to Bentley House, one of a pair of early 19th century houses, double fronted with Venetian windows, notable as the house where Samuel Taylor Coleridge stayed in 1815. There is a story that his use of opium had reached such a level that the local chemist either ran out or refused to serve him, 
and he had to send to Devizes for more. Our last house is opposite, Church House. This dates from the late 17th century and was the town's guild hall from that time until 1832. During that time, the affairs of the town were administered by a corporation of burgesses. It was substantially rebuilt in 1860 and was given a first floor hall. The blue plaque commemorates Dr. Jan Ingen House, an eminent Dutch scientist, physician and botanist who discovered photosynthesis. He was a guest of Lord Shelburne at Bowood in the late 18th century. He died there in 1799 and is buried in St Mary's Church.